Hello cruel world. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. So I thought it'd be interesting to do a video related to mass shootings, maybe a bit morbid, but I wanted to do a real life example. <clears throat> so what is the mentality behind the mass shooter? What are their emotional and psychological traits usually? What do the perpetrators have in common? And how are mass shootings driven by mental illness at times? I'll be answering all these questions and many more in this episode. So sit back, relax, grab a bulletproof vest, and welcome to Psych the Sawmine. So I wanted to whet your appetite with a case example because I love you so much. So I've been looking for an interesting case and I thought the most fitting case would be the story of the YouTube mass shooter. So she was known as Ms. Agdam and she also called herself Nassim Sabs. There's a brief bit of background. She was of Iranian descent. In case you're interested, other famous people from Iran include Cyrus the Great, who is the founder of the first Persian Empire, Darius the Great, who is the king of Persia, not to be mixed up with that dude, Darius Dinesh, who did a cringy Britney Spears thing on Pop Stars in 2001, AKA Darius the Loser. <laughs> My words cut deep. Maybe I should do a psychoanalysis of him one day because what he did was truly criminal. If you know what I'm talking about, you're probably too young click in the link below to see his cringy video. Anyway, back to the scene. She immigrated with her family to the US in 1996 when she'd have been around 17 years old and she had multiple YouTube channels. She made some very kind of odd, surreal videos, including her dancing, putting on animal masks, weird exercises in very colorful lycra. She would promote veganism, she would do this with singing. There was just like this oddness about her. She had very little facial reaction and kind of like a distant stare. She looks kind of how I feel when I'm watching one of Dr. Grande's videos. Oh no, he didn't. But she got very disgruntled with YouTube and days before her 39th birthday on the 3rd of April, 2018, she stormed the YouTube offices in California in a place called San Bruno. She went to an outdoor patio in the YouTube offices and she wounded three people, including one of them critically before she tragically killed herself. Nassim purchased a Smith & Wesson semi-automatic piston in January of the same year. So this is the bit that gets a little bit spooky because she went missing from her family home a few days earlier and the morning of the shooting, the police found her asleep in a car park of a Walmart in Mountain View, which is about 25 miles away from where the YouTube headquarters were. So the police called the family to inform them and they stated that she had very specific, hateful and vitriolic ideas towards YouTube and that she'd been rambling about this at home around the time and they were worried that she would be doing something drastic, that she might be travelling to the YouTube's company office. So despite all of this information, the police did not search her vehicle. If they had, they would have found a loaded gun and probably would have prevented the tragedy. So should the police have searched her car? Difficult question. To be fair, at the point, there was no signs of aggression, there was no history of violence. So let me know what you think, dear viewers. Tell me in the comments section below. Is it potentially because she was female? Would the police have treated her so leniently if she was male or a black male, for example? So later, they found out that Nassim had also been on a shooting range the day before obviously practicing her shot. Donald Trump actually made a thoughtful and sensible tweet about the shooting after it happened. He didn't blame it on the Mexicans or on crooked Hillary. So let's deep dive on some of Nassim's online statements to see if we can get like a deeper understanding of her motivation, her mental processes, and also to see if there's any mental illness. So her online statements included the following. Dictatorships exist in all countries, but with different tactics. They only care for personal short-term profits and do everything to reach their goal. Even by fooling simple-minded people, hiding the truth, manipulating science and everything, putting public mental and physical health at risk. Abusing non-human animals, polluting environments, destroying family values, promoting materialism and sexual degeneration in the name of freedom, 
and turning people into programmed robots. Videos of targeted users are filtered and merely relegated so that people can hardly see their videos. There is no equal growth opportunity on YouTube or any other video site. Your channel will grow if they want you to. So as a forensic psychiatrist, I assess patients who've committed crimes related to paranoid delusional beliefs. Check out my many videos on this. I have to say, reading this, I'm kind of sitting on the fence. So there's no question that there's a paranoid flavour, however it's not necessarily delusional and I'll explain what I mean by that. It could be kind of borderline conspiracy theory and probably some of what Nassim is saying has a grain of truth or is it at least it's an exaggerated version of the truth. Some of the comments can also be interpreted in different ways. So for example, she talks about people turning into programmed robots. So it all depends if she actually literally means physical robots. You know, does she mean like you'd undo some sort of screws behind their faces and pull it off and there's all these wires behind and the optic microchip doesn't work because you didn't use an official Apple adapter. Obviously, if she thought of that, that's delusional. However, if she meant it in a more kind of poetic, metaphorical sense, as in people being pushed to decide what they like and comment on YouTube algorithms, then that's probably a version of the truth. So if I had the opportunity to assess Nassim in person, I'd really need to test the validity and the strength of these delusions. But also critically, I need to test the source of these delusions. So for example, if Nassim said during my assessment that she'd been making these videos, she's trying to break through and believe rightly or wrongly that her content was being suppressed and that other similar content creators, other stone face, emotional Iranian dancing vegans were getting more views and more promotion than her videos, then she's probably disgruntled, but it's probably the version of a truth or at least a feasible truth, even if her take on it is a bit extreme and a bit warped. However, if she said, for example, she was sent a message from aliens or she could hear the voices of YouTube executives in their offices hundreds of miles away as if they were next door, then these suggest uh, delusions, hallucinations. Or if she said that she saw a pattern in the video sidebar that only she was able to interpret, which had a meaning, a hidden meaning, that might be a delusion of reference. So the next logical question is why am I telling you all this? Why bother making the distinction? The answer is this. If it's delusional, then it's related to mental illness and potentially it can be cured or it can be treated with antipsychotics. For example, if Nassim had, if her family was so concerned and they'd made her see a psychiatrist, if the psychiatrist convinced her to take antipsychotic medication, then this could have been avoided. It also means in terms of rehabilitation for the future, it can massively decrease her risk in the future with the right medication. By the way, see my video on the Unabomber and whether he was schizophrenic, schizophrenic, which I've released recently. It's very interesting. I break down exactly what I'm talking about, this belief and whether they're not a delusion or not. Also, Nassim claimed that YouTube was censoring and, and limiting her views. I believe it's probably not true, but also it's not inconceivable, or as they would say in The Princess Bride, inconceivable. Incidentally, I also feel that my videos don't get enough views, but don't worry, I'm not gonna do anything drastic, apart from begging you to subscribe, and the only thing that will be sacrificed is my own dignity. So let's move on. Let's look more broadly at perpetrators of mass shooting. So I'm no longer talking specifically about the YouTube mass shooting scene, I'm talking in general. Okay, so what is the psychology behind all this mass shooting? After all, that's my USP, that's my job. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders. So perpetrators of mass shootings in the US are overwhelmingly male. Do you want to have a quick guess at what you think the proportion of mass shooters who are female are? I'll tell you the answer now. It's only about 4% of shooters are females. So that makes them seem exceptional. They're usually relatively young, usually around the age of 30. So as I said before, she was approaching her 39th birthday. Pay attention kids, because this is the most educational bit. I educate whilst you vegetate. Is that a good tagline? I don't know, let me know in the comments. Mass shooters tend to be Caucasian. They tend to fit a pattern of being alienated, isolated, disillusioned, frustrated, resentful, and then at some point furiously angry. They usually suffer from inferiority, rejection, impotence, 
and they feel powerless and they feel that their lives are meaningless or insignificant. So this immediately makes me think of the case of Alec Manassian, who in April 2018 intentionally hired a van and ran over multiple people. He killed 10 people, he injured another 16. As I made clear in my video on him, I think that, well, I know he had autism and I think that some of his traits indirectly would have contributed to this. I'm not saying that directly, caused him to go on a killing spree, but there's just uh, indirect mechanisms. He was also romantically rejected, and at the trial he talks about specific incidents of being blown off by a woman in a library. So people who become mass shooters often perceive some sort of injustice, very much like the case of the Unabomber. Check out my video on him, on Ollie. Obviously they're not technically mass shooters, Manassian and Unabomber, but you know what I mean. They sometimes have a yearning for some sort of recognition, and they have this like hunger for fame, they seem to mix up celebrity and notoriety and they have this profound desire to be remembered or distinguished in history. And this appears to be the picture for the YouTuber Nassim. In fact, you can say that all YouTubers are narcissistic and want recognition in some way. They feel that they need to be loved. Apart from me, of course, I'm completely stable. Sometimes after they've failed, they move on to mass violence as an instant way to gain attention. And around 65% of perpetrators who act violently against government officials has suffered from some significant symptoms of mental illness. That is according to research by the Secret Service. Also known on the street as the Clandestine Club or the Hush Hush Crew. And around 25% have been treated either with hospitalization or medica medication in the past. Arguably, the number could actually be higher, although not everybody presents with issues to mental health services. I think it's feasible this could have been the case with the YouTuber Nassim, uh, usually because they lack insights and they fully believe their experiences such as delusions. Before I give you my comments on the relationship between mental illness and mass shooting, I'd quickly like to introduce you to this channel, A Psych for Sore Minds. So I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist I assess mentally disordered offenders in prisons and in courts and in secure psychiatric units that are reserved for the most dangerous patients. I make videos on a range of topics from individual diagnoses to high profile cases. My USP is I sometimes talk about my own personal cases that I've seen myself, although obviously I anonymize the patients out of respect for confidentiality and for the victims. Uh, I talk to people who have had experience in mental health issues. What I'm trying to say is there's something for everybody on this channel. The format, as far as possible, I do deep dives on Tuesdays and more informal, kind of relaxing, less scripted videos on Fridays. Just going back to what I was saying before about mental illness and shooting, I think it's really important to emphasize that having a mental illness is a broad spectrum. It's not necessarily significant or relevant to criminal culpability. It doesn't necessarily drive all offending. For example, if somebody is just a bit depressed and irritated and bullied and he shoots up a school, then yes, they've got mental health problems, but they would still very likely be responsible. It's probably in the context of anger, revenge, and there would not be, for example, a psychiatric defense like not guilty by reason of insanity. However, in a separate sense, set of circumstances, if somebody is acting upon overtly psychotic symptoms, such as hearing voices and feels compelled, then they, it's a different situation. There might be a psychiatric defense. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll be freed. They might have to go into long-term rehabilitation. If they committed a mass shooting, they would almost certainly end up in a high secure hospital like Broadmoor regardless of the complexity of their mental illness, just because of the nature of their offence. They'll probably be there for many years. They might not ever get released if they've killed several people. And I think it's important to make that distinction about criminal culpability, because that's literally my job, advising criminal courts about whether there is a diagnosis, and if so, the severity of the diagnosis, criminal culpability, psychiatric defence, and finally, disposal. So that's deciding whether somebody should go to hospital or whether they should go to prison. The other thing I wanted to say is that unfortunately, mass shootings are on the rise, particularly in the United, in the United States. So if we look at the first three and a half months of 2021, mass shootings have increased in the US by nearly 73% from the same period last year. So within that time period, which is January to mid-April, there have been a 147 mass shootings this year compared to 85 last year in 2020. So they're occurring more often 
to the point that another massacre, including high school shootings, are barely shocking news anymore. And I think it's dangerous. I think if we as a society, as a society become inured, it's more important now than ever to understand the factors that lead to mass shootings and to make sure there's enough psychiatric care available to prevent people early enough from taking this route and going down this path. There's obviously a very strong argument for a much tighter gun control. But just like Scientology, the National Rifle Association is not a gentle foe. So I think I will give that a wide berth. Thank you. But having said all of that, even if treatment's available, if people don't seek help, it's very hard to prevent these tragedies. Unfortunately, there is no easy solution. So all that remains for me is to say, please subscribe to this channel. Not only does it help me out immensely, but it also gives you temporary relief from those itchy piles that we both know you have. Just wanted to say that I'm gonna be a speaker at CrimeCon in the UK. It's a huge true crime convention in the States coming over to London for the first time on the 25th and 26th of September. Cop tickets, if you want 10% off, use the code PSYCH, details in the link below, because I've got your back. I'll be doing a talk about two real life family members who killed their own relatives. One had a mental illness, one had didn't. These are people I assess personally. You'll hear from crime investigators, law enforcement agents, uh, podcasters, etc, etc, and you get to interact with your favourite podcasters if that floats your boat. If you're a true, true crime enthusiast, you got to be there, man. You just got to. So I have to say, stay euthymic. Please remember, I love you.